Hello everyone and welcome to day one of Lion Brand Week. Yay! It's here, it's here. Alright, today's tutorial is going to be for this super cute little beret. You can see it here on Holly. She's styling it ever so sweetly. Um, in the tutorial, this is the one that I, this is the one that we have the numbers for. I added a couple of extra rows in the tutorial on mine because I have a larger head than the average human. <laughs> So if you want to make it bigger than this in the, that is in the tutorial before the decrease, add a couple of rows of just double crochet and it will give you the extra volume you need around your head. Um, but yeah, this yarn, the tutorial is really easy. This hat takes all of maybe an hour to make. So it's a really quick make. It is a really quick make for gift giving. It's got beautiful, I know, it's hard to tell on that one. Pardon the hair. <laughs> it's got beautiful bobbles. It's got a variety of stitches on the inside. It's very easy though, don't be scared. But in the tutorial, you are going to see that I started off making it with the, the dark blue of the jeans yarn. And then I switched over partway into the tutorial so that we could actually see the light blue because it shows up a little bit better on camera. That's just one thing you're going to see as I switch back and forth. I did not have enough of the blue jeans to make two entire hats. Or actually, I didn't have enough of this to make two hats. I had enough because I still had some of this left over. So you can probably get two hats very easily out of one ball of jeans yarn. So this is the top of the beret. This is the colorway. Uh, I think this one is acid wash and this colorway the darker blue is brand new let me open up lion brands website so i can just double check and make sure this yarn is delicious it is soft and squishy i have nothing negative to say about this yarn whatsoever i highly recommend it and i have been saying that for a while now I bought the mini pack from Lion Brand, which is $16.99 for a seven pack of like little tiny minis. And I wanted to test out the yarn. I wanted to show you guys all the colors that are available. And I clicked on the wrong one. I clicked on the wrong one. Jeans. There we go. All right, the light blue is faded. So not acid wash, it's faded. So this is faded. There is a um, a rusty color of this yarn, but mostly it is blue jean color. And one of them is vintage that looks a little more green. So like teal colored. So it comes in seven colors, all blue jean inspired. And if you wear blue jeans a lot or you like the look of denim, this is your yarn to make accessories to go with your jean outfit. Now, if you want to wear this cute little beret with a white t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans, it's going to look fantastic. You want to amp that up even more, make yourself a cute little neck scarf or a cowl to go with this <laughs> and match it up. And if you want to go extra, extra, Put on a blue jean jacket to go with your denim jeans. Wear your little blue jean beret with a white t-shirt and a, a blue jean cowl, a, a denim cowl. I mean, it, it's it's really cute look. I love the look of blue jeans. I love the feel of blue jeans. Now, personally, I like stretchy blue jeans, so my blue jeans gotta have a little stretch in them. But as for this yarn, it is the perfect combination of blue jeans and softness and stretchiness. And it's got like a beautiful feel to the yarn. There's a little bit of give in it. It's just a beautiful, I really love this yarn. And I know I've said that because <laughs> you guys, I've been talking about this blue jeans yarn for a while. So like I said, one ball will make this hat. Stay tuned, the tutorial for this hat is coming up. One ball is all you need. The price on Lion Brand as of October 1st is $6.99 a ball, but they do have a coupon code at the very top of the Lion Brand website that will give you 30% off all yarns and kits. So that offer ends in 22 hours from right now. So if you catch this early in the morning, you should still be able to get your 30% off. I don't know what sales Lion Brand is going to be having this week, if any, but I mean, it's best to catch your yarn. <laughs> 
I have a shopping list yesterday of all the yarns you're going to need for all the projects for this week, so check that out. But yeah, this is the yarn we're using. One ball of jeans is all you need. You could probably get two hats out of it. And the tutorial is easy, quick, fun. Cannot recommend this yarn enough. It is probably, of all the yarns I've used this week, it is probably my favorite, which is why it's in the number one spot for this week's tutorials. The tutorial is fun, easy. The yarn is beautiful, soft, delicious. Now, I'm going to say this. If you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. I'm glad you're here. But I have eczema on my skin. I get really bad flare-ups, and I am very sensitive to a lot of yarns. And there are some yarns I just cannot use at all. This yarn does not at all like it feels so delicious on my fingers and even right now I'm a little bit dry and I get what I call um, velcro skin so I get these little spurs in my skin and yarn will stick to it and I I hate using yarn that sticks to my skin this stuff does not this stuff is it is so nice it's soft it's luscious it's beautiful and I really enjoy working with this yarn and rest assured I will be having more yarn with the, more of the jeans yarn in my life because I love it so much. So stay tuned and you will see the tutorial next for this. All right, to get started on this hat tutorial, we need one ball of the jeans yarn, unless you wanna make a coordinating scarf to go with this, which I highly recommend this yarn. Like I said in the intro, this yarn is really, really nice and soft and squishy and beautiful colors. All right, and I am also using a six millimeter hook because I made a sample one last night with a five millimeter hook and it just was not as fabulous as I want it to be. So I'm using six millimeter. If you have a smaller head, go ahead and use a five millimeter hook for this hat. Uh, it will still work out with these, these counts. Um, and obviously I will give you ways to make this hat a little bit smaller if you need to as we're doing the tutorial. So we are going to start the tutorial with a magic circle, which is very similar to a slip knot. So I'm going to show you how I make a magic circle. You take your yarn like this and you, you fold it over your finger and you make like what looks like an awareness ribbon. But this little tail here goes on the bottom. Okay, and you pinch it at the X and you go top down and you grab a loop and you pull it up. Okay. Now you're gonna chain one, and you have just created a magic loop. Now we're this, if you've never done magic loop before, you can chain four and work into the chain four space. But this is just easier for me, and I like the magic loop, and it's not that hard. It's a little fiddly until you get used to it. Now we are going to make six bobbles, and so to do that, we are going to wrap our yarn, go into the loop, pull up a loop, pull off two, you should have two on your strand. Wrap your yarn. Go into the loop. Pull up a loop. Pull off two. You should have three on your three loops on your hook. Do it again. Wrap. Go into the circle. Pull up a loop. Pull off two. You should have four loops left. And do it one more time. Pull off two loops. You should have five, one, two, three, four, five, and then pull through all five of those loops and then chain two, okay? That's our bobble. So we're gonna do that six times and keep going into the loop. And you may need to pull this string a little bit to make your, your hole smaller, but work over the top of this. It will help lock it in, okay? So we're gonna wrap our yarn, pull up the loop through the loop, pull off two, Pull up, pull off two, pull off two, pull off two. You should have five loops, pull through all five loops, chain two, two. Wrap your yarn around your hook, go into the loop, pull up a loop, pull off two, do it again. Two. Two, pull off two more. We have five loops. Pull through all those. Chain two, one, two. See, now we have three bobbles. I need to pull my yarn a little tighter to get that hole smaller. Another bobble. Five, 
five loops, pull through all of them, chain two. One, two, three, four bowels. We need two more. Don't forget your chain two. Chain two, this is our last bobble. So we got, if you flip it over, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Chain two after that last bobble, grab your tail and pull it as tight as you can get it without breaking your yarn. See, that should close it up. Very nice and tight. I wonder if I should switch to a lighter colored yarn. Can you guys see that? I may have to switch to a lighter yarn. Let me do that. That just is way more visible on screen. All right, so I got my six baubles. If you need to pull them apart, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now I'm going to pull my tail tight. Get it all the way tight. See? And then we are going to slip stitch into the top of that bobble. It doesn't really matter where, but there's like kind of a stitch that's more towards the front. If you slip stitch into that, it'll make your life a little bit easier. This one. All right, now we are going to be working in the spaces between the bobbles, okay? So if you need to go ahead and pull these apart, you go ahead and pull these apart. We're going to put, and we're going to crochet right over the top of this tail, okay? It's just going to help lock it in, and then we don't have to weave in nothing later. So, we slip stitch on the top of this bobble, and we need to slip stitch over to the next space in between the bobbles. Chain two. And then we're going to make a bobble chain to a bobble in each one of these holes, okay? So we're going to do a bobble, which is the, the four double crochets chained together or crocheted together, which is exactly what we did in the last row. So it's not, I didn't change anything. We still have the five stitches. Chain two. Stop. You the garbage man. All right, I think we're good. So we did bobble, chain two. I'm gonna put another bobble in that same space. And yes, it's gonna be tight, but it's gonna work out. Don't worry about it. So that's four double crochets together. Whoops. And try to keep your stitches loose. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really hard time going back through all these stitches. So try to keep everything loosey-goosey. And we're gonna chain two again. Now we're gonna skip over the next bobble and go into the space next to the bobble. So we're only working in the spaces. And the pattern all the way around is bobble, chain two, bobble, chain two, yeah, bobble, chain two, bobble, chain two, all the way around. You should have 12 bobbles at the end of this row with a chain two space in between all of them. The dogs are very needy today. I don't know what is going on with them, so they keep popping the door and coming in here. And I already had to turn my phone off today because, like, Grand Central Station, everybody needs me today. <laughs> All right, chain two. So that's our two bobbles. So bobble, chain two, bobble in that same space. And pull the stitches apart. Don't be afraid to pull on your work. So that's where we're working. We're skipping the bobble. We're going to the next space. We're going to do, don't forget the chain two between every bobble. Bobble, chain two, bobble. Chain two. banging my hook off the table so that was chain two whoops that was not a double crochet chain two another bobble in that same space all 
chain two. I need to grease my door. Skip the bobble, go into the next chain space. Put a bobble, chain two, bobble, chain two. Now you're going to see me switch back to the darker color when we get further on because I don't have enough of this light blue jean yarn to make a full hat. So I'm going to have to make two hats simultaneously. Don't forget your chain two after every bobble. Go to the next space. Same thing. Bobble, chain two, bobble. Chain two. Let's see, we are at the end. We have one chain space left. Don't miss that chain space. You need 12 bobbles around here. Okay. Bobble, chain two, bobble. Chain two. I really like the jeans yarn because it is soft. It feels really good on my skin. It's squishy, it's plump. And I really love blue jean colors. Chain two. All right, now we're at that very first stitch. And see how it kind of like leans right here. There's like a stitch that looks like it leans right over the top. Just work into that one and slip stitch because it's right there, okay? Now, the next row, we're going to do this exact same thing here, except we're going to have more bobbles. So, I mean, we're, we're going to do the same exact stitch, but because we're doing it, we're going to do bobble, chain two bobble in every one of these space spaces. We're going to actually double our, our bobbles for this row. So once again, slip over into that next space right there. Chain two, bobble, chain two, bobble, all the way around. Well, in every space, bobble, chain two, bobble in this space, bobble, chain two, bobble in that space, all the way around. speed up a little bit. Don't forget the chain twos in every space. Bobble, chain two, bobble. Chain two. Next space, bobble, chain two, bobble. And I know it doesn't make logical sense that we're doing that many bobbles, but trust me on this, it will work out. I already made one, I know. Because <laughs> even I was questioning myself last night, I was like, I don't know, this is going to work. This seems like it's too many stitches for around here. It worked out. It worked out beautifully. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. So just trust the process, okay? I know that some of you are like me and you feel the need to not trust the designer and you do things your own way. Just trust the process, okay? <laughs> I do the same thing. I like the, I'll watch a tutorial and I'll be like, that don't seem right. I, she's gotta be wrong. It's not wrong. It's not wrong, it'll work. Y'all are awfully grumbly today. You need to stop. Both Scarlet and Oreo are in here in Bentley's bed and he's off 
wander in the backyard. Scarlet is like alerting to absolutely every little noise. And because I'm doing a tutorial, there's no extra noise in the house. Chain two. Don't forget the chain two in between your bobbles. Every bobble. Chain two. So see how it's starting to ruffle a little bit? That's what it's supposed to look like. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I actually think I'm going to make... Because I'm doing this in the light blue and I don't have enough of the light blue, I think I'm going to actually make two of these hats. I think I'm going to make one where the center is light blue. I'm going to make one where it's just all dark blue. I think it's going to be cool. One, two. Buckle my shoe. Put a bobble next door. This hat actually matches my jean jacket because my jean jacket's this color. Well, one of them. I have several jean jackets. I have like a slight obsession with jean jackets. <laughs> I really specifically like the jean jackets that have little spandexy in them and are stretchy, but I have one that's a really stiff jean jacket that's this color that has Mickey Mouse huge on the back, and I'm kind of obsessed with it. And since I've lost 60 pounds since last year, it's going to fit me way better than it did last year. I might even be able to button it. <laughs> now I'm a cute beret. I need to do a cute little photo shoot. See, that's all the light blue I have. That should get us through the center of the hat where the details really are. And then we'll switch back to the dark blue. space there so we're going to put our last bobble increase of bobble double crochet bob or not double crochet bobble chain two bobble you know just work with the yarn and it just feels so good like you can't help but keep saying god this yarn is soft <laughs> really 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 love this yarn chain two Slip stitch to join on the top of this bobble right here with that long, the long stitches right there. All right, that is what that looks like. Now, once again, oh no, not once again. Now we're going to change it up, okay? We're going to do a drunken granny stitch, okay? So now we need to flip the bobbles towards us. So now we're going to work in the opposite direction, okay? So this is the side we were working on. Just flip it over, all right? Actually chain one. Give us a chain one so we can actually turn. And we're still going to work in these spaces, but we are going to put a different stitch. So that chain one, and then just take and put maybe three double crochets. Yes, three double crochets in that chain space. three. Okay, so we're going to do a granny stitch, then chain four, one, two, three, and four, and go into the next chain space and do it again. Granny stitch. So three double crochets. Chain one, 
chain four. Next space, three double crochets. Chain four. Next space, three double crochets. Chain four. Okay. This is what it should look like, okay? We have all these loops in between. Just do that all the way around. In every space between the bobbles, all the way around, three double crochet, chain four, and I will meet you at the end of this row. All right, so we're at the end of the row. We're gonna come over here and in the top of, and it doesn't matter, anywhere on the top of this granny stitch, just slip stitch on there. Just make sure it's in the granny stitch because we're that's we're gonna kind of anchor it right there. So now we're gonna use this next chain four space, and we're gonna repeat this last row. So we're gonna do chain three or not chain three. We're gonna do three double crochet. Chain four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to the next loop and do the same thing. Three double crochet, chain four. One, two, three, and four. Go to the next loop, do the same thing. Three double crochet. Chain four, all the way around. Just continue that. Nope, <laughs> I almost made four. I almost made four double crochet. I do that frequently. Like when there's like a number that's close, I just keep going. So because it's three double crochets and chain four, I keep trying to make four double crochets. Nope, it's three. Three double crochet, chain four. All right, I'll meet you at the end of the row. See, it's starting to give this little wiggly wobbly. That's normal, that's fine, don't worry about it. You guys didn't tell me I missed a stitch right there. <laughs> I missed a whole stitch right there. So I'm missing, I'm missing a square. You know what though? We're just gonna, we're gonna fudge it. We're gonna fudge it. We're just gonna fudge it. It'll be fine. So I'm in the last little section here. This is my last three double crochets, chain one, two, three, and four. We're gonna slip stitch on the top of that granny section right there. We're gonna pretend like there's not a bigger hole right there. It'll be fine. See, bam, bam. Problem, well, kind of solved. I'll fix it. I'll fix, I'll go back and fix it, but. <laughs> Switch, because I'm making two at one time. All right, so this is just the one in the darker color. It's exactly the same, except I didn't mess up and miss a stitch here. So this is what it should look like. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and slip stitch. I'm doing it in the center of the, the three double crochets right here. All right, slip stitch to join. Now we're joined in the round. This is what it looks like. Okay, now what we're gonna do for this row is we are going to, what are we gonna do? We're gonna slip into the chain four space. So slip stitch over. So you're in the chain four space, a big opening right there. Okay, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and put three more double crochets in there. So that equals four double crochets. We're gonna put four double crochets in every one of these spaces here. No chains in between. 
just four double crochets in every chain space all the way around next chain space four double crochets that is what this row should look like okay that's what it should look like these openings are starting to open up it's all part of the the, the details it's a very lacy hat it's gonna be very pretty all right four double crochets in every chain space all the way around every one of these gets four double crochets but you guys know how to do this so I will meet you at the end of this row and when you get to the end of the row you can just slip stitch to join right here in that very first double cro or the chain three space or the it's not a space the chain the very first chain three of the row that false double crochet let's go ahead and slip stitch into that and i will meet you there in just a moment because this row is going really quick all right so this is what we have so far by the way, I fixed my mistake in the light blue one. I'm a row behind in here because I don't have enough yarn to finish that row. So when I finish this hat, I'm going to finish that hat in this dark blue. So you should probably see both of them. All right, now in this row, this is real simple. We're just going to chain five and connect it with a single crochet. Chain five to connect it with a single crochet. So we don't have to do nothing. We slip stitch to join. One, two, three, four, and five. Go to that next chain space, or the space, it's not a chain space, the space in between the shells and just single crochet. Three, four, and five. And do that again, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in the chain, in the, it's not a chain space. I gotta stop calling it a chain space. The space between the shells. Three, four five single crochet such an easy simple row but it's going to add so much detail and if you happen to be curious about my crochet hook i got this on amazon well mr cinnamon did but i will link it below It was incredibly a bargain for this beautiful, gorgeous hook. It's a beautiful day out today. It's only going to be 64 degrees today. There's a little breeze outside, and the only reason I don't have my windows open is because that wind chime is kind of loud, and when I'm doing a tutorial, I don't like to have that loud noise in the background of a tutorial. I think when I finish this tutorial, I'm actually going to go sit in the backyard and finish that other hat and work on tomorrow's tutorial, which I'm super excited about. It was actually Juju's idea. In case you're new here, you just happened upon my channel. Juju is my 18 year old daughter, my beautiful, sweet heart of a daughter. I showed her the yarn and I was really struggling. I was like, I need pattern ideas. I need tutorial ideas. And Mr. Cinnamon gave me the same idea, but his idea just didn't work. So when my daughter suggested the same thing. But she suggested which yarn. I jumped on it. She just made it sound, you know, she just made it sound better. <laughs> Poor Mr. Cinnamon.
Now I'm noticing with this hook, this yarn is just a slight bit slitty. And if I just control my tension and pull the yarn a little bit tighter, it's not, it doesn't split as bad. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not slowing me down. We made it. Oh, we made it all the way around. All right, so see? We made it all the way around. We're going to slip stitch into that very first area where we chained out of. It's not an actual. Oh, no, wait a minute. Did I go too far? I went too far. I got to back it up. I got overzealous. There we are, we're supposed to be there. So I'm gonna slip stitch into this general. Actually, I'm just gonna put a single crochet right where we connected that. All right, let me look at my notes and see what our next row is. All right, so in every, every one of these loops, we are going to put five double crochets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip stitch into the loop Chain one, the, that chain one don't count as nothing. And then we're gonna put five double crochets. One, two, three, four, five double crochets. Go to the next loop, five double crochets. And do that all the way around. Next loop, five double crochets. Next loop, five double crochets all the way around. All right, we're at the end of the row. This is uh, getting pretty big. It's what we want. Now, I mean, if at this point you decide you don't want this to be a hat, this would be a beautiful doily. <laughs> I'm just saying it would be a beautiful doily and it lays perfectly flat. So, all right, um, all right the next row, we are gonna start a decrease row. And in order to get the decrease row, what we are going to do is we are going to chain three, skip the next stitch and do a double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, then we're going to skip the next stitch and in the next stitch after that we're going to put a double crochet. Don't put a chain in because this is a decrease. Okay, so we're going to skip every other stitch and then put a double crochet. Skip a stitch, double crochet. Skip a stitch, double crochet, all the way around. And if you're new at crochet and you don't know what stitch definition looks like, just pull your stitches apart and look for this is a stitch, this is a stitch, this is a stitch. See where the holes are? Hole, hole, hole. Just skip the next one and go into the one after that and put a double crochet. And so while there's a lot of different stitches in this hat, Every row is a little bit different, except for a couple of rows there was a repeat there. This is not actually a very difficult pattern. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, what I have next to me is I have a pen and a paper, and what I'm doing is I'm just marking off what row I'm on as I finish it, so that I keep track of what row we're on. So this is the part of the beret or the hat 
that is going to start to fold under. So this is going to be the top part. This part is going to start to curl and we're going to fold it back that way. And it's going to start to curl under so that we can make the part that goes and connects to our head. Just continue double crochet, skip one double crochet. And we are decreasing our stitches by half, so it's going to fold a lot. It's going to curl. And that's exactly what we want. Now, depending on how big your head is, so I suggest you try it on after doing a couple of rows of decreases and make sure that it's not too tight on your head and that it actually fits around the circumference of your head. Because I have a bigger head than you guys do, when a lot of you do. My head is 23 inches. The average head is about 21 to 22 inches and that one inch makes a huge difference and I have a hard time with a lot of hat patterns because they just don't fit my head especially top-down patterns so definitely take that into advisement like I said if you have on the smaller end of the the, the head circumferences use a smaller hook and the same yarn it will work out and the hat will be smaller Like automatically but not like a half a size so this is six millimeter like go down to a five unless you have a really small head then go down to like four and a half there I think yep yeah, we're almost there Bentley, you're awfully restless today. All right, we're back to the beginning of the row. And we have one stitch between, although it doesn't matter, like just, it should be one stitch, but even if you have one too many stitches, it'll be fine. Slip stitch to join in that very first chain space. And see how it has come in like a lot? Make sure your bobble stay on the side that is gonna be on the outside of the hat. So I'm gonna actually curl this around so that the bobbles are now facing downward, okay? See how much that has come in? Quite a bit. Now, if you have, let me see if I can measure this. It's a good way to measure this is to fold it in half. We are at about 11 and a half, so you would want to double that. Maybe 12. So we're at 24 inches. So that's still kind of big for me. Uh, I don't want it to be too big. So I'm debating whether I do another row of decreases or not. Because when I made mine yesterday, 
I didn't need to do a second row of decreases, but I think I need to do another row of decreases. So I'm going to just chain one, and I'm going to, yeah, let, let me think. You know what, we're just going to proceed. Do a row of double crochet and then we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we will measure it again. So just that chain one and then double crochet in the next stitch and go around and double crochet. You can see very clearly where the stitches are here, here, here. So just double crochet all the way around because that actually might bring it in a little more. Actually, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to switch to a smaller hook because that makes sense. I'm going to switch to a smaller hook. Alright, I'm switching to a 5mm from that 6mm. And that will give us exactly what we need. Alright, so switch to a 5mm hook if you're using the 6mm. That will help. And now we're just going to do double crochets all the way around. And I think that's going to absolutely solve the problem. Wow, that feels like way smaller. <laughs> It'll be fine. It will all work out. Yeah, that made a big difference. And it's okay if it's a little bit snug when you first try it on because it's going to stretch. It's absolutely going to stretch. But don't, don't make this so tight that it's going to cut off the circulation to your eyeballs. Because we don't want that either. Yep, that, I think that's going to do it. Alright, problem solved. Just had to think for a second. Because I, like I said, I made a prototype of this hat yesterday in a different yarn. And I figured out some things, and I got it to fit perfectly, but there was a few adjustments I made during the tutorial to fix some of the problems I had yesterday. And then, because I fixed those problems, I needed to just adjust a little bit here. And I think that's going to work out beautifully. So just switch to a smaller hook. Just whatever, just whatever you're doing, just switch to a smaller hook. I went down a full, oh man, my, oh, my thumb is hurting. Told you guys recently that I, I did something to the, the joint right here. And I get, it's cracking every time I move it. It's like grinding. Oops. Alright, so we're just doing double crochets around and around. My yarn is caught. When you get done with this row, slap this bad baby on your head and make sure that it fits. Because this part that this row we're doing now should be able to fit the circumference of your head very easily. We're still going to do several more rows, so it's not done. By a long shot, it's not done. Try flipping itself back around. Lay down, Scarlet. I don't know if you guys can hear her tail. She's staring at me, wagging her tail. Wait, are you thirsty? Do you need water? Is that what you need? You can't come up here. You can't come up here. Give me a minute, okay? I've already eaten, so the only thing I figure is they're out of water.
Man, going from that hook to this hook feels like I'm holding a stick. It is like drastically thinner. Alright, we're almost back to the beginning of the row. Oops, tangled. What? All right, beginning of the row. Slip stitch to join. Pull out that loop a little bit, try it on, make sure it fits my head good. Oh, perfection. All right. Now, continue this row. Just do du double crochets. One, two, three. In the next three rows, just double crochet in the round for the next three rows. And try it on and see if that is long enough. Because this is going to continue to just grow like a tube like this. Make sure that that's long enough. Um... You can even do a couple more rows if you want this tubing part to be a little bit longer. But isn't this a beautiful little beret? So I'm going to do three more rows of double crochet in the round. And then I will meet you at the end of those next three rows. Three. Alright, so I put on my three additional rows of double crochet. And that's all she wrote, folks. That's it. <laughs> so let me grab my scissors. So you should have four rows total of the double crochet after we did the decrease row. Let's pull that off. This is our hat. Very, very cute. Um, now, of course, if you have a larger head, if you need to add an additional row or two here, that is perfectly fine. Um, just to get it to, to fit a little bit better in your head, especially if you have like a longer head than you do a fat head. My head's more fat than it is round, but see how that worked up. I really enjoy this hat. I think it's really cute, and I hope you enjoyed making it with me. And um, I will see you tomorrow for another tutorial featuring Lion Brands.